Hi, everyone. Yep. Thank you so much to another episode of So Zoom In. Today, I am chatting with Steve Grossman. He is in the UK and co-director of Fusion Film Festivals. Um, his co-director is Dan Hickman, who is not joining us, but Steve as he's gonna cover it all. I'm, I'm confident that he is. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining me. How are you today? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Thank you for asking and thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely fine. Thank you for, for inviting me to the um, to do this interview. Um, been looking forward to it all weekend. Um, thank you, thank it's you. It's a bit odd because as Sophia knows, I normally do the, I'm the one asking the questions. And this is kind of in reverse. And I have to tell you now, this is only the second time this has happened to me in over 700 interviews. Oh, okay. it's, uh, it's it's very interesting because normally the boot's on the other foot. So I am looking forward to feeling how it is from the other end of the, okay. from the other end of the gun. So we will say. All right. Well, I know we had a chance to speak not too long ago, and I, I find you're an absolutely fascinating person. You're doing so many things. And recently I've been doing a lot of interviews with film directors or festival directors. Um, film, film festivals yeah. are pretty much all over the world. And what you are doing yeah. is absolutely, to me, fascinating. You have you. four different festivals all over Europe and you, you yeah. categorize it by the, the directions like north, south, east, west. And I'm yeah. really curious as to how you yeah. got started in that and what inspired you to do something like that? Yeah, I always like Thank to- you, that's a really good question. Um, no, no, it's a really good question. What what happened was we were, Dan and I were work, working for, kind of running another set of festivals, which were nothing to do with us. We were there to support and, and help run these festivals. Um, and the direction that we wanted to go in wasn't happening. We had these plans um that we wanted to implement and we felt that the festivals that we were aligned with just didn't have the same kind of vision as us um and it was kind of stuck in the mud and it just wasn't kind of dynamic enough and the big thing with dan and i is obviously we love meeting people we love talking to people in fact i it, it's the quirk is the favourite part of my, of everything we do with the festivals is, funnily enough, is doing the interviews because I know you say we spoke before, but you always get amazing amazing stories from filmmakers. So we decided we want to do our own thing. But um, so international film festivals are in, based in Europe. But then we thought about it and thought, well, we don't want it to be um, a local. How can I put this? We didn't want it to be tied into a location specific. So we didn't want to call it Fusion Film Festivals London or Fu Fu Fusion Film Festivals Valencia, which is where we go. But we have a north, east, south, west. You're quite right. And the reason we do that is it means we could theoretically and factually change the East Festival from Warsaw to Gdansk for instance you see so we've built in it built into it the ability to change locations but still be within that compass point so it may be with as an example it may be with Covid I'm not saying this will happen but who knows that they say that the travel in Europe remains difficult because my firm belief is I know things are changing with um, the Covid roll roller I've been lucky enough to have both my shots but do I think travel is going to happen anytime soon in a meaningful, serious way? No, I don't. I really don't. I think that we are looking at 2022 for any kind of serious travel again. Because I'll give you an example, Sophie. If I said to you, well, our festival is open um, next week, or not festival, the, the international travel is open next week. I don't know if you would actually want to travel to somewhere in Europe because... I'd be a bit reticent about stepping on a plane right now, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, now, that's not to say it won't happen, but it, it will happen. But it's, I think it's going to take longer than people think. So that's that's the reasoning be, behind the launch of our festivals in a nutshell. So, I kind of went off piece there. So sorry for that. Right. So how is this affecting your actual festivals? I mean, because you have because you have four different ones and they, they are spread out yeah. over here. Um, because of this ongoing pandemic, how is that affecting you know, um, the actual festival itself? Is it something you're doing online or are you still able to do it live? Are you, you know, Yeah, yeah, we do. You know, we, 
No, we do. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's again a very interesting question because at the beginning, if we go back to Feb March last year when this all really kind of kicked off, um, we had Zoom meetings about this. You know, we, we what are we going to do? We we knew that we would have to do virtual festivals. We we spoke to um, Film Freeway, um, and the the worrying concern kind of evaporated it actually worked out really well because as more people became more accustomed to zoom and meets or microsoft meetings and and whatsapp calls we that took away the worry of us worrying about that because as we are now um it, it became the the new norm for people to dial into this so in actual fact the um the awards nights we have lots of live events so we have a a quiz night. We have a, a professional panels with um, uh, with all the filmmakers involved, and the professional people we, we bring in are experts on um, distribution, experts on production, on finance, on promotion. Um, and it was really strange to begin with because we kind of thought, "Well, how's this? It's quirky," but all of a sudden, um, it worked out really well. So for, for Fusion, for us, it has worked out really well. Um, we, we've been lucky, but we're not lucky because I think you, well, yeah, you're lucky, but you, I think you combine, you, I think you combine that with making your own luck. And I think if you've sown the seeds of being able to tackle problems as well as you can, it helps massively. I'm sure it does with you and your work. Um, you know, it's trying to, um, nullify any potential problems. And we kind of done that from the off. So, it's worked really well. And, and, and one of the things that is, is really interesting is before the pandemic, um, way well before the pandemic, Dan and I were talking about, oh, well, there's certain professionals we would love to have presenting, but we know they're not going to fly from LA or New York, or it just doesn't fit into their itinerary. Well, there's no way we could have them on a big screen in a, um, in a hotel with loads of people around them chatting because that just wouldn't work. It's amateurish. And no one's going to buy into it. Well, now we can do it. Because, of course, when the festivals become live again, real, which will, as I say, I can't see it happening this year, but I think early next year that it will. Mm. Um, there's no reason we can't have, um, I don't know, a, an acclaimed director talking about why, uh, you know, the best way to make films, but actually from uh, his suite or his, his, his um, living room in... I don't know, Bel Air, but talking would be nice if it was in Bel Air, but you know what I mean, talking about that on a Zoom screen because people will accept it now, Sophia. It's, it's, it's actually it's become a very interesting case study of what can be achieved and what's um, going to now be accepted as, as being fine, you know? So you could actually open up the festival to a lot more people then by having it half live, yeah. half, half virtual. Yeah. It, it, yeah, exactly right. That, that's absolutely, and in fact, that's exactly what we are seriously considering. Um, we are, we, we are going to, we're looking at having the live festival as normal, where everyone would come in and meet, fly and so on and so forth. But the the virtual side of it, where we can have guests which we couldn't do before because it'd be frowned on by visiting yeah. guests, but we can now do that. So it's a really, it's potentially a really good opportunity for us. Um, to bolster up the professional panels where it was a difficult thing to do before. Right. Well, I'm, I'm so curious because I know there's nothing like being live when you, you know, you meet someone in person and you can read the body language and you yeah. know, the whole chemistry works, you know, whether you're able to carry on a conversation or not. And, and I, I think it's that those kind of relationships that really build um, that kind of situation that really builds relationships, you know, and it depends on, you know, yes. will you, will you continue the conversation after the festival, something when you're doing it online, yeah. Um, is I, I would think that offers more of a challenge. I mean, do you find that having done festivals virtually these past few months that people can continue a relationship past being online? Is yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had a couple of uh, filmmakers that are uh, one of our um, industry professionals. He is an expert on getting your script or film to market. Um, and he's actually been pretty successful with a couple of the filmmakers or a script writer in particular. And what you said is absolutely true. I absolutely much rather pe meet people face to face. That would happen. But what what I mean by having that virtual is most of the guests will be there live at the festivals. 
but I'm talking about just a couple. Say, for instance, we wanted a bolster of a couple more. That would just be like as an add-on, um, and it just it will add to it. Um, but the in terms of what's happened so far with the festivals in that virtual way, yeah, I mean, you can't. It's you know, an example would be if you and I were talking. Um, in a meeting room, a hotel in LA now, it'd be completely different to the meeting we're having over Zoom. But logistically and and, and everything else involved, it's, it's really it would be really different. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I'd love to jump on a plane and go to LA. I've never been to the West Coast, but the not fact yet. is, no, yeah, the fact is, I can't fly because of the quarantine, quarantining this end and probably your end and all the expense and everything involved. One of the biggest challenges, Sophia, was actually. Um, the films themselves, because what we had to do was devise a system where we could show the films online, much like a Vimeo platform or mm. Netflix and something like that. Um, but that in itself became a bit of an issue because we looked at Vimeo as an example, and we felt, and this is in our opinion, be very careful what I say here, we felt that it wasn't secure enough for all sorts of reasons. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't recommend Vimeo. So we had to find a platform that was like Vimeo, but wasn't Vimeo, that was much more secure and um, robust. And we could take, we could put it through our website, but ultimately be going to a third party, but using a, a web, our website, we're going to another portal. That was challenging. We found a, we found a company that could do that. Um, that's worked really, really well. There's no buffering issues and it's really good quality. Obviously we have to make people aware that um, they know from the off that um, we, we're doing the online screenings, but we have procedures in place. For instance, we can password protect films if people rather do that. We don't have to show people's films. We always ultimately leave it to the filmmaker to decide if they want their film shown. So that's a that became quite a challenging issue, which we managed to get over. Um, but then we have to make sure, and then top of that, I mean, these are just examples, we have to make sure that people have project or panels that they would be interested in attending so for instance the festival runs the monday to friday with the awards night on the saturday and like i said we've got like a quiz night that lasts believe it or not for a couple of hours professional panels on the monday they last an hour and a half two hours at a time so they're lot they're, they're and we have it about seven o'clock in the evening which suits the us or the north american uh entries and funnily enough I've already had loads of filmmakers and script writers asking about this next festival. Um, so the, the official notific notifications go out, I think, on the 7th or 8th of June. I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm answering your question really badly, but um, it, it gets back to the point that which you were asking about, how is it going? And it's going pretty well. We're, we're, we're pretty happy with the way it's gone, um, but it's nothing like, it's nothing like the real thing, of right. course, um, but it's but it's the best that we can hope for. I mean, I don't know how you work in your day job, but I suspect that I'm imagining a lot of the work that you do is from home. I guess. I mean, I don't know, but I'm, I imagine you are like most like, like a hell of a lot of people now. Right. Yeah. Well, this whole year has kept everybody home, um, but. I, I really am excited about everything opening up again because I have to say there's nothing like watching a film on a big screen. You know, to see to see your project, what you've put so Absolutely. so much into on a 60 foot screen is just magical. And sometimes these film festivals are the only time yeah. someone will get to see someone's film. You know, because um, you just never know. So, so I, I'm grateful for the internet and so for all these different avenues. You know, for films and communication to be accessed. I mean, that's really opened up a whole new universe of possibilities. You know, yes. and I, I, I think it's great that you'll be able to combine, you know, both, you know, the live factor and, yeah. and the online factor. So how did, do you go to every single festival, right? You're there, right? I mean, your upcoming one is going to be in um, Belgium, is yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. We, we are yeah, that's the obviously that's online, but yeah, that, that, but if it was in reality in Belgium, oh yeah, we'd be absolutely there. So, at, a, at an actual real festival, the festival, um, the real ones run from the Saturday to the Saturday, so seven days. Um, and that the whole our crew get there normally on the Thursday before, so we've got a couple of days to set up, 
and we normally leave on the Sunday or Monday afterwards. So for us, it's like a 10 or 12 day gig. Um, typically at a festival, I would probably do in the region of somewhere between 30 and 40 video interviews at festivals. Um, I know six, six, seven, eight a day, um, which takes up a lot of my time. And the way that works um, is, as you'll find out, because I know we've got an interview tomorrow, but we'll no doubt have another one, which, uh, you know, leading up to the festival, that would be built over a diary, which takes me about three or four weeks to put together. So most of my time at the festivals is um, pressing the flesh, really, in terms of, well, I do anyway, but I mean, in doing the, 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 the interviews, with that, it's a lot different. And that's the other thing, actually, that we have to learn to do. With the interviews that we do, live live interviews, we have two or three cameras. We have two or three Blackmagic cameras. We've got a mixing desk. We've got a camera on you, camera on me, and I think a central camera as well, so we can edit it in. So one of the challenges was, and that works really well, how do you do an interview with someone or group of people and not use the video? Because like this interview, and I, obviously I know you're recording it, um, from the outset, we were, wow, well, we can record it, but we weren't comfortable with, this is us, not you, we weren't comfortable with using a video for the interviews on our website, on YouTube. Now, we know you're going to do it, but it's, it's, it's completely different because we felt that because we offered people that real experience of doing like a proper you know gig set up at the festivals we we didn't we couldn't replicate that um on a on a zoom call um or you know like we are now so we we took the decision to strip out the audio and just use that if i'm honest i don't really <clears throat> i don't want to do that i'd much rather do the the three camera angles of course i would but we decided just for the um, while well, we're doing the virtual ones, we would we, we would do the audio stream only. Now the interesting thing is um, that most filmmakers that we've spoken to said no, that I would do that, and I, I've said to all of them, look, I'd much rather interview on camera with the, the festivals. We know we can't do that, so we would just rather take out the audio. And we thought we'd have a bit of pushback from that, and we're quite surprised. Most filmmakers have said, do you know what that? In fact, all of them have said that's a fair point. We'd rather you only use the audio because if it was having the pizzazz of doing it, they 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 buy into that. Right. But yeah. you can't do that, can you? So you know, we felt was we just didn't want to go down that road, but because it's part of like a almost like a calling car for us. Um, but yeah, we we're there for the whole the whole duration. We love it. I mean, we do obviously have some downtime, um, but not much. It's it's quite full on. Um, and we love it. We do really, really love it. I, we love meeting filmmakers. We love meeting script writers. And we love meeting, truly, we don't really, we don't really mind or care might be a better, better word um, in a sense of what people's connections to films are. And that sounds a bit of an odd thing to say, but if you go with me, if you bear with me, what I mean by that is, as I said earlier, everyone involved in all the films we've ever had at our festivals always have the most incredible stories. And so it doesn't matter if it's the editor or the producer or the script writer or the director or the cat or the cinematographer or the sound designer. I mean, it does matter. Of course it matters to the film, but it doesn't matter in the sense of, you know, you're going to get an amazing story out of them. And your story, which when you're involved with a film, isn't necessarily going to be the same story. Let's assume that you were the director on a short film. Um, so you'll have complete oversight and overview and, you know, you'll be controlling the whole kit and caboodle. But your stories that you tell won't be the same as the actor or actress or the, the editor. So you always get really amazing stories. And actually, um, the hardest people, generally the hardest people to interview are the actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. And that's only because, only because, no, because... I, if they're involved behind the scenes, it's, it's you get much more nuanced stories out of them. But often um, actors and actresses are guns for hire, aren't they? So they may not have, they're there to do a job, which is to act, and, you know, in, in a very professional way. But 
they won't necessarily be able to tell you much about why the film was made or the whole history of the, the film. Now, it's not to say they're not interesting people, they're incredibly interesting people, but they may not have that the, the kind of intimacy and uh, of, of actually what the film, the whole story behind the film. Um, and that makes sense to you. Yeah, I'll that's be... not to say they're not incredibly interesting people because they all are interesting. Well, I mean, yes, of course. So all these stories, I, I know right. that you have a podcast. <laughs> I lost you. Um, you have a podcast, so all these stories, um, they can be found on your podcast on your website, right? So people that's can- right. Yeah, That's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So if you click, so the, we've got, <clears throat> if you was to go back to London from last year, if you wanted to go back that far, you would find the video feeds via our website. You can see us doing like we are now the video, but obviously it's at the, the festivals with the, the multi cameras. And then post London, um, the pod, you'll find loads of podcasts on there. I mean, we 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 don't um, we we do edit some away. You know, we kind of hundreds on there. But if you were to go on there now, you'll probably find fifty or sixty on there. So you know, we there are um, there's loads on there. And and the thing is part of that is you kind of think is there a, a finite amount of questions that you can ask people and the answer is no you it's infinite because i always ask the same opening question which is you you know please give us the synopsis you've got to ask that right but after that you can go in any direction and it's really it's really interesting because i don't i don't have scripted questions um and the reason i don't do that because well i'll give you an example the way we're talking now is very natural it's exactly how I like doing an interview, right? Um, and I, I think that's, I mean, it's my personal opinion. I think that's the way it should be because when you get um, someone talking like this, which is natural, you're much more likely to get um, that person's, um, I don't know, they're kind of like their soul coming out and their, and their, and their nuances and, and the kind of person they really are rather than having stilted or stiff answers. Um, so it became quite apparent. It came apparent to me very early on that the best way to, to I think, to do interviews is exactly like we're doing now. I mean, you're very relaxed, very easy to talk to. And this is like we're sitting having a cup of tea. And I think that's how it should be, you know. Um, and it works well, you know, it works really, really well. And people, people are, and filmmakers and script writers are brilliant at telling stories. It makes my life really easy because... <laughs> you are by your very nature storyteller. So what, why, you know, I'm not going to struggle, you know, I've talked to people in other industries uh, way before this um, that were, I don't know, worked in finance or I don't know, um, oil exploration. And, you know, it's, then it's not going to be as interesting as the way we're talking now. It's just not possible. I, I, so um, <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I had a question on mine and then I started thinking, it's like, no, okay. And everything just naturally shifts yeah. so organically, which I love the whole. Yeah, of this. I love that. I love that. I think it's the way, I think it really is the best way because, you know, we could, I mean, I, I remember, I mean, this is me going off piece now, you see, this is what happens when we do, we have needs, but I love that. I remember talking to a, a filmmaker five years ago, maybe four years ago. And this woman, she's quite well known, so well known, I've forgotten her name, but she was quite a well known actress. And what was really interesting was I'd done a, it was a three way into us, four, it was me and three others. And there was a director, the actress, and I think the cinematographer. And what happened, I said, oh, we must keep the interview. For, I try and keep it to 20, 25 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole film was a short story about homelessness in LA. And this woman went from having it all to having let lose everything in a matter of one paycheck. Now, I didn't realise, I had no idea the, the scale of homelessness in LA. You know, I just have this idea, this is bright lights, big city, and the you know, streets are paved with gold. I know that's naive, but, you know, what I'm trying to say is I, I couldn't, I was very surprised. But anyway, when I saw the film and I was talking to them, and it was quite shocking. I mean, you, probably, you obviously know this better than I do, but I was startled by it. But the... What happened in the interview is we were talking about it and the, the actress, she, her degree was in, um, not humanities, um, oh, I can't remember what her, her degree was in now. Um, um, but it was, it was, anyway, it actually, it actually delved into, um, somehow, 
it worked really well into this homelessness story. So we then spent 90 minutes in on the, it was on, a, on this stream and the time just flew by and we stopped talking about the film and we just, just talked about homelessness and the story she told me, things they had all seen, which we, was utterly, like I say, shocking. Mm. So that's how it goes. It went, it went away from this. We should have been talking about the film, but we just completely forgot about that. <laughs> Obviously we snipped it all down, cut it down to 20, 25 minutes, but that's how it goes. It runs away, you know, but I didn't want to stop talking about it because it was so interesting. And um, the stuff that they, they were telling was really heartbreaking. Um, and then they started talking about San Francisco and they said, oh, you think it's bad in LA, you want to go to San Francisco? And we just went all, all over the place, you know? But yeah, that's like you said, that's like an organic interview where you start talking about things and you can end up talking about the oddest things. I mean, I talked about beer with someone once, of all things, or wine. I mean, we talked about all weird things, you know, that get into the conversation. Um, and that's how it is. And I like that, you know? Well, that's what's so great too, when you have that. I mean, and you're, you're in an industry where you're all about films. You're all about story. So by having that, you, you can't yeah. go off in any other direction. And it always comes back to story, which comes back to film, and which is part of the reason I believe why you're doing what you do, because you love story so much. And by having you know four yeah. different yeah. festivals going on pretty much all year long, you're constantly in that flow of creativity and, and of story. Yeah. So that can take you in any direction at any time, which I feel is very exciting. And that you just really are open to allowing that to happen. It is. So, um, so with you, with this ongoing story, I mean, all these different stories you get, um, you could actually write a book. Yeah. All your different stories. Um, so <laughs> that would be really interesting. Like an. So, ongoing... say, it would. Yeah, it would. And, and I think you know, I'm, I'm not I'm sure if I mentioned this to you, but um, there was a, a filmmaker. I think I might mention this already. And she's asked me to be in a film. Um, and because it's really, it's really weird because she said almost exactly what you said. And this is me blowing, blowing my own trumpet. I'm just telling you what she said. She said, Oh, Steve, it was great. I interviewed her. And she said, Oh, it was really nice to you. She said, You've got a really nice voice in the way you sort of project yourself. And you'd be really interested to have in this film that I'm doing. Um, and she's, I know it's got some <clears throat> really famous actor in it. Um, and I think she's got the budget in place. So I'm waiting to find out. If I'm honest, that'll be great fun. But um, I don't. I'd love to do it, but it's not, it's one of those things that if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And what I mean by that, I know by the, by talking to people and being involved with filmmakers, the very nature of filmmaking is that you get the green light, but then all of a sudden it can all just fall away. You know, and I know that it's a real heartbreaking thing with filmmaking. And do you know what I think filmmakers, when I say filmmakers, I mean everyone involved in filmmakers, that includes you, whether you're a scriptwriter or an actress or a producer or a director or an editor. I think it's the hard one of the hardest professions to be in because you've got to be able to take no 99% of the time, you know. And if you can't take no, then you're in the wrong industry because most of the time it's going to be a no, you know. Well, I think what's interesting too, it's such a collaborative effort. You know, it's not yeah. just you. I mean, no. you could do it just on your own, but that's not really, I mean, you, you need you need your core team, you know, any anywhere from like sound person to, you know, script girl to you know, makeup and producer, I mean, all these different elements have come in the editor. And if one, one person has to fall out, you know, is finding that new person. And, and I don't think people realize how many cogs are in that wheel um, to really have. Absolutely. And that, that's really important. So, you know, I, I feel so, film is to be celebrated because it's the new way of storytelling. And there's so many different elements involved. It's never just one person. You know, we, we might honor one person. Absolutely. But it's a whole village behind that person. You know, and in, in your own way, I love that you celebrate the art of film, you know, because you come with, come with it with such passion and you're celebrating everyone. You know, it's just like everyone's included, even though, you know, one person might get an award or, you know, be, you know best this or best that, but everyone is being celebrated just by coming together, which I don't Absolutely. Know. A lot of people yeah. realize, and to me, that's that's really important. Um, Absolutely, yeah. You know, you're spot on. It, it, that's uh, that's a really really good point, and um, I think, um, and I I don't want to demean people in in general, but I truly think that most people don't realize 
what goes into making a film. And, and the truth is, I probably didn't before I started getting get involved with festivals because you see something on the screen, you see all these names up, which will just whiz by, you never take any notes of it. But I truly know that the effort that goes into making, do you know what? It could be a five minute film. It could be a two hour film. It could be an animated film. I know that the pain and dedication and, and, and structure that's required and the collaboration that's required to do this and, you know, to, to pe bring out the piece of art because that's what it is. And I know it's bloody, bloody tough. And I take my hats off to everyone involved in films, you know, and the thing is, Fear, we see, and it's genuinely true, we see hundreds and hundreds of films, right? And see hundreds or dozens and dozens of scripts. Honestly, most of the films we see are good. I mean, not we don't get many films that are awful. The, the problem with that is you then have to, you know, there's a cut that has to be made. And some of the festivals we've had have had five, six, seven hundred films entered, um, and they, but and and you've got to cut that, you know. And there, there's got to be a criteria. Hence the reason we have a judging panel. That's their problem, not mine, I guess. But um, I'd say the 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 quality of filmmaking is really good. I mean, 